What time is it? I just seem to have lost my watch. I can't know what time it is. What day is it? What time of the year is it? Questions about time seem to become important to people, especially when you get a lot older, right? Am I going to make it through the night? Am I going to wake up tomorrow morning still be alive? You know, when you're as young as you are, you've got eternity in front of you. But when you get to be as old as me, or as old as some of the other people here, we realize just how short our time on this world really was. One day some of the Pharisees came to Jesus. They saw the writing on the wall. They saw the signs. And they said to him, boy, does Jesus know what time it is? You think he's catching the clues? So they came to Jesus and they said to him, Jesus, Jesus, do you know that our King Herod, he wants to kill you? Do you know that? Jesus heard him. He didn't push him off. He didn't push him aside. He didn't say, oh, I never knew that. Jesus knew exactly the time. He knew exactly what time it is. Because he knew the Lord of all time. And he said to those Pharisees, go tell that king, go tell Herod, that fox, I know what time it is. And then he looked at the people, and a lot of them had rural groups. Now, uh, Josh, Michaela, ready? How many of you here have some kind of farm history? Raise your hand. Okay. Good. We talk about uh, and this is for our kids who've been sick by. How many of you on your farm have actually seen chickens? Raise your hands. All right, it's looking good. How many of you can remember going early in the morning when you got sand in your eyes and you're really not fully asleep, walking into the chicken coop and then that smell of fresh air? How many can remember those days? Oh, what do you really smell? Come on. A moan and just like, boom, right? See, Josh, okay, I told you, I said to them, I bet you the majority of the parishioners, because it's, it's right now to see the congregation, have grown up in a farm. Again, how many have grown up with some kind of farm? And you've seen this? Look at this. But it's amazing how in today's harvest, with many young people, or churches and younger people have no idea about farm life, you know. So anyway, back, where was I? Oh yeah, back to the story. Jesus says to those Pharisees and the people as he comes and he sees the city of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. And there's sorrow in his heart. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How I would have gathered you like a mother hen under my wings. And how I would have protected you and the prophets. But you, Jerusalem, have killed the prophets before you. And there's a sigh of grief in Jesus' voice and heart. You keep Killing the messengers God sends. The gospel of our Lord. Congregation, please stand. We're going to sing in this time, and then we're going to hear the gospel I I made the assumption that we know the song. Is that true? Okay, here we go. It is time, it is time, he makes all things beautiful, it is time, Lord, we show thee every day, as your teaching be your way, that you
verse 31. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox, I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I will lie down and I will sleep in peace for you alone, O Lord. Make me to dwell in safety. And today the sermon is titled, Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep. I pray the Lord, my soul, to keep. Let us pray. Gracious Father, from your Son we see someone who knows and experiences your care for him. We see in Jesus someone who knows that in prayer there's an intimate communion and relationship that gives him this confidence so that when his last hour comes and he knows it will come for him that he rests in safety help us this morning O Holy Spirit to keep turning to Jesus so that not only that we have this confident love and grace in our life but when our last hour shall come and it will come here for everyone that we will dwell in safety. For we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. During the season of Lent, I have made mention to you, and you are gracious enough to let me do this, to do a series, a preaching, teaching series about prayer. And the reason I have been led to do this is that within Christian community, one of the most delicate areas, and maybe often misused or neglected areas, in the life of a Christian, or a Christian couple, or a family, and then by extension, a congregation, is our inability to be a community of prayer. Yes, Pastor, we know what we ought to do, and truly, we want to be a community. I want to be that person who does pray. But the bottom line is, I find it so difficult to pray. It's as if my words go so high, and I'm not sure even if they reach the, the rafters. And then it's as if, God, you're not there. It's as if my words seem to get lost in space. And of all the things that a church community is to encourage, is to edify, is to educate, and to develop a wholesome experience about, it's about this one area. Oh, people of God, pray. O oh, brother and sister in Christ, pray. Everything else can be put aside, you know, but time is too short if you've not learned how to pray and to pray well. I know in my own personal life, I did not come from a home that was a praying home. Now, they did pray a lot, but the A was changed 
to an E. E R E Y. And we pray on each other. You know? A lot of put downs. There were words of Christian faith that were used in a context that was not becoming, was not healthy. We pray on each other's emotional weaknesses. And, and as, a, as a part of that, we get wounded. But to pray, P R A Y. You know, this morning I share with you, I am a child of a home where I never once prayed with my dad. I never heard him ever sit down with me and pray. Not even something as simple as, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Bless this food to us. Be blessed. At night time, my dad never entered our bedroom to pray with me. Now I lay me down to sleep. My mother attempted more of this, attempted to keep the Christian faith going. But, you know, uh, raising eight children in the home that we did, oftentimes it was left like a vacuum. Not like a vacuum cleaner, but, you know, nothing there. Even though this is my upbringing, my experience, as I've gotten older, as I've matured, I thought, oh, all oh, you folks, you're just prayer warriors. And then I discovered that's not true. What we faced in my home is shared in many homes today, even in 2015. Christian parents of children seldom find time to pray, to pray together. So it is the most delicate and sensitive ministry area. And today, today Jesus, and throughout the Lent season, Jesus is inviting us and encouraging us to come and to let him teach us how to with his precious life. I'd like to draw your attention that there are three books that I have found to be just excellent uh, and encouraging books. You can find these at the library at CLBI. I know they're there. Carolyn, these are my copies. They're not taken from CLBI. She's the librarian. It's on the, but they're in your library. So I don't know if they're in the Camel's public library. But I also know that the library in Augustana, another excellent resource uh, to go for Christian literature. Excellent resource, especially about Luther stuff. So Alan, you know, about Taylor and Lutheranism 101. If you don't have a book that you can get, you can take it to Augustana's library, section BS, kind of funny, isn't it? Luther studies are the BS section, but they're right there, excellent library. One of those uh, books is Luther's Small Catechism, Compliments. How many still have their original Small Catechism? You know, excellent resource book. You know, Church of the Lord's Prayer, it uh, talks about what prayer is and, you know, questions, and then it goes through each of the petitions. And then if you have the opportunity to read Luther's Large Catechism on the Lord's Prayer, an excellent resource book. Knowing though that Lutheranism is greater than Germans, right? A book from a great Norwegian, Ole Hollisby. Isn't that a wonderful name? Ole Hollisby, you know, from the uh, from Norway, you know, taught at the, uh, the Free Institute, the Free University in Oslo, wrote a book on prayer. An excellent book, easy to read, very brief. But the other one that that is. Uh, A real gift into Christian faith is from a Quaker. Not, not like the little old guy. He's out of Pennsylvania. You know? His name is Richard Foster. He's a retired teacher now. He wrote a book called Prayer, Finding the Heart's True Home. I want to read a part of his book and then draw it back to our song <coughs> today as a word of encouragement. 
God has graciously allowed me to catch a glimpse into the Father's heart. And I want to share with you what I have seen. Today, the heart of our Heavenly Father is an open wound of love. He aches over our distance and dizziness. He mourns that we do not draw near to Him. He grieves that we are slowly forgetting Him. He weeps over our obsession with muchness and manyness. He longs to be with us. And so today, He is inviting you and me to come home. To come home where we belong. To come home to that for which we were both created and redeemed. His arms are stretched out wide to receive us. His heart is enlarged to take us in. For too long we have been in the far country, a country filled with noise and hurry and crowds, a country that climbs and pushes and shoves, a country filled with frustration and fear and intimidation. And so he welcomes us home. Home to a place of serenity and joy, a home where friendship and fellowship and openness abound, a home where intimacy and acceptance and affirmation abound. We don't need to be shy. He invites us into the living room of his heart where we can put on the old slippers and share freely. He invites us into the kitchen of his friendship where chowder and batter mix in good fun. He invites us into the dining room of his strength where we can feast to our heart's delight. He invites us into the study of his wisdom where we can learn and we can grow and we can ask questions, even the dumbest of questions. And he invites us into the workshop of his creativity where we can be co-laborers with him, working together to make this world his world. He invites us into the bedroom of his rest, where new peace is found every day, and where we can be, ah, and there's quotations, naked and vulnerable. It's also a place of deepest intimacy where we finally get to know who we are and who God is for me. The key to this home, the key to this place is the heart of the Father. And it is through prayer that we come. And I'm here to tell you today that the Father's heart is open wide and you, you know, he says, brothers and sisters, are welcome to come on in. If the key is prayer, then the door into the Father's house is Jesus. Behold, I am the door. You must come through me to enter into my Father's house. Luther said that when you read the small catechism. You know, Alan, you're going to know who is the true God that we talk to. There is but one true God, and we come to the true God through His Son, Jesus Christ. How good of God to provide us the right way into the Father's heart. When I read these words as an opening to prayer, I must say that in my life I began to cry. I began literally to cry. And I wondered, why was that? You know, my, my eyes were filled with tears. My heart was breaking before me. And I stand before you this morning as a person who said, I think and I know the reason I was crying was that for me, prayer had always been so formal so ritual and so vague. And the one thing I longed for was
ourselves to be personal and intimate with God. And these words bring me close to the Father's heart. I've heard other people say this same kind of teaching before. It's not like it's a rare teaching, but at that point in my life, it spoke to me. And it made me rediscover both as a person first, as a father second, and then as a pastor third, that what Christian faith is about is being drawn to the Father through His Son. And the means by which we are invited to use to enter into that intimacy is prayer. Through prayer. And that a congregation's ministry one to another. No offense out here, it's not great organizational skills. And you are gifted in that area. You know? But it's not how well organized we are. No offense, Carolyn, you are a gifted musician, and we're very pleased to have you here with us, but church isn't about the music. You know, we have gifted lay people who serve the Lord in various ways, and we're thankful for that, down to the, to the many years. But church isn't about what service we do for one another. It isn't whether you have a gifted preacher or not. You know, Grace Lutheran, in my experience, has had countless gifted preachers in your history. You know? uh, the Lord has sent us prophets. And some of them we've received well, and others, well, we haven't received them as nicely as we could have. But the Lord has sent us messages. But it isn't about those messengers. In the end, we remember Jesus saying, My house is not a den of thieves. The Lord's house is a house of prayer. The Lord's house is about brothers and sisters in Christ who hear the voice of Jesus knocking on your heart want him to come in and to let him do the one thing that he is anointing you to do, to teach you how to do. Pray. And to pray for Jesus in each other. To pray Jesus and his well-being in young. Keaton, I think you're the younger, you're the youngest one here. And the oldest person is Elsie Kaiser, you know how I know that? Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. You turn 98 on Thursday. Happy birthday, dear Elsie. Happy birthday to you. You hear that, Elsie? And you know how I know this? Because she watches Grace Luther on television in her. In her so we say happy birthday to you, Elsie, belated as it is. But she turned 98 on Thursday. So we get the birthday party too. Yeah. Don, were you there for that birthday party celebration? No. It's today. When you get back home, it's today. 98 years young. And so what is Grace about? The Lord is speaking to us today. Jesus is speaking to us today to return to Him, to be a community focused in one ministry, one work, the ministry of learning how to pray. I'm going to close by saying, well, what can be that one area of ministry then, Pastor? The one area I'd like to show you is really practical and functional is in the area of sleep. How many go to sleep at night? I ask this because there are some people I have bumped into who say they never sleep. You know, they, they, they have a hard time to go to sleep at night. They'll catch little weeks during the day, but to actually go to bed at night and sleep, 
they can't do that. I find that hard to fathom, but I actually know a couple of people who are like that. We all need sleep. In fact, if you take a look at your day, 24 hours a day, the older you get, the more you sleep, right? The younger you are, it seems, you need sleep. But somewhere between, you know, some age and some age, we seem to vacate sleep, we fill our days with work and whatever. But generally, we need sleep. And yet in this area, when you lay your head on your pillow, it still is an area where we need prayers because the Lord can finally speak to us because we're not gathering. We're not busy doing stuff. The most common area that the Lord speaks to people is in their sleep. In your dreams. In your visions. In the whisper that, of the Lord that comes to you while you lay your head upon your pillow. And Psalm 4, verse 8 says, I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me to dwell in safety. And so a ministry area really is to help through prayer a person getting to sleep. In North America right now, maybe in Canada and Canada, one of the most common ailments that people suffer with is they can't get to sleep. And there are lots of people who are under medication. Some of it is necessary, but some of it is just like, I can't find sleep. One of the ways to help a person be attended to is to do this. Now, I am doing this intentionally because I know that Dave and I, we share, a, a, we're, we're sometimes called night owls, right? I'm not as nighty as you, Dave, but there are others. Oh, gracious Father, for Jesus' sake, come to us today, Dave and myself. You know, we can work long and hard, but then give to us that needed sleep so that we are rested. That's a prayer. Believing that the Lord will attend. You know, and I just as an example of it, you know. That can be done. For permanence. So when you hear people say, I've got kids, I have nightmares. What can you do? Pray. Lord, how much to break Joseph in his sleep who's afraid of the night? I still sleep with the nightlight on, by the way. How many still sleep with the nightlights on? Be bold. Come on, you can be vulnerable this morning. Am I the only one that sleeps with the nightlight? Oh, wow. Because to me, I'm still somewhat afraid of the dark. And even though know, I've prayed this prayer many times, Lord, protect me safely during the night. You know, it drives my wife crazy. She sleeps in the... Uh, it's like a cave, dark as anything. I need somewhere a little light you know, to help me slide down in safety. That can be done. You know, people suffer from nightmares. Pray for them. Lord, come into that person's life now and be in that dream now so that they know that you are know, with them always. So there's one area here, and Stan, I haven't asked you this, but I, I hope you'll give me permission, and if I've offended, if I've offended you in advance, forgive me, okay? When you say, and when I lie down and sleep in you, the other thing that we have to realize is our last hour will come. And I mentioned this about Stan, because I was there with Iris, wasn't I? And we were at the hospital, and we knew that Iris was and during that time that she was passing from this world into glory, you know, I can remember Stan and myself just praying for her, you know, into your arms, O Lord, we commit and we command others. Into your arms, gracious Savior, receive her and welcome her. 
And in that time, she passed on into, as the song says, a most blessed rest. It was as if she was sleeping. And that's what we learn here at this community. Not only pray for sleep during the day, but we also let Jesus help 